The Mayan civilization is a term used to define the complex network of city-states encompassing the Yucatan Peninsula and surrounding areas split up into three distinct periods, the Early Classic Period, the Late Classic Period, and the Post-Classic Period, with all three ranging from around AD 250 up to around AD 1500. The bar and dot mathematics system we'll be learning about today was already in use by around 1000 BC. Similar to other Mesoamerican civilizations, the Maya's numeric system utilized a base 20 system, otherwise known as a vigesimal system. The Mayans were among the first peoples to develop the concept of zero, as well as a symbol for it. The Maya joined the mathematical ranks of the Hindus, Chinese, and Babylonians, with their knowledge of zero denoted using a shell-like symbol, often a placeholder in how they conducted their mathematical operations. The main sources of study for the Mayan mathematics, besides surviving works on artwork and temples, comes from four mostly intact Mayan codices, the Paris Codex, the Madrid Codex, the Grolier Codex, and the Dresden Codex, all unfortunately named so as the proper titles are yet unknown and the names are derived from their area of discovery, usually their rediscovery in Europe, or in the case of the Grolier Codex, its discovery in Mexico. As depicted here, each codex is responsible for the majority of what we know about Mayan writing and mathematics. While each codex has sustained wear and damage over the years, the Dresden Codex, for example, getting water damage among the infamous Dresden bombings of World War II, but fortunately, there are old chromolithographs taken pre- and early 1900s of the Madrid and Dresden Codex available online for free. According to modern understanding of Mayan mathematics, Mayan math utilizes a bar and dot numerical representation and a shell-like placeholder denoting zero, both organized in a vertical base 20 fashion where each step of a vertical ladder of sorts are summed together to create the desired number. So let's build up our knowledge with some examples then. All right, so first I'll build up an example here by explaining or giving the visual for what the bar and dot is. So we'll start by providing you guys with a visual for the bar and dot system and that includes a dot denoting a value of 1 and the bar denoting a value of 5. The bar is usually filled in. So I'll pull up a visual aid for you here showcasing from top left to bottom right, the numbers 1 through 19. And as we'll see here, for numbers greater than 1, greater than or equal to 20, the use of the base 20 system is required. And this is organized in a vertical fashion. So the way that I like to describe it is the base 20 ladder and I'll explain that for you in a little bit here but first I'll also show you what the number 20 looks like in the Mayan mathematical format and so this would be a dot with the placeholder shell underneath it So this right here is the number 20 in the Mayan system. If you wanted to compare that to how it would be calculated in modern notation, but using the format of Mayan math, uh, you would compute it. The way that it's computed is 1 times the value of 20 added together with the units below it and because this is just a shell it's a placeholder denoting zero meaning that we are adding zero for the units place so one times 20 plus zero is obviously 20. 
So we need to introduce another tier above what we saw for the number 20 to start calculating these larger numbers. So for example, I'll calculate the number 400 here for you guys. So the number 400 in my math notation is one dot on the top tier, two dots in its middle, and again, another placeholder in the units. So this would be the number 400 in my math notation. And I'll break that down for you the same way I did for 20. So this top tier here, this value, the way that this is being calculated, because these are all being summed together to create the number 400, this is the value 1 multiplied by 18 times 20, which equals 360. Um, and then we're going to add to this 2 times 20. Uh, as we saw before, with the number 20, anything in the second tier gets multiplied by 20. So because there's two dots, 2 is being multiplied by 20, and we're going to add that to 0, because this is a shell, it's a placeholder denoting the number 0. So adding all of these together, that equals 360, that equals 40, so 360 plus 40 plus 0 equals 400. All right, so what I mean by the base 20 ladder organization for numeric representation for my mathematics is that the way they organize their calculations to represent a number is vertically. So like a vertical ladder with each tier of the calculation applying a different multiplication to it. So I kind of placed these on a rung of the ladder. So each rung of the ladder is a different formatting to how you get your number. And you add all of these together, or all of the rungs of your ladder together to get the value you're representing. And you use the key of a bar equaling 5, a dot equaling 1, and a shell equaling 0 to build those. So these are all variables that for any place could be exchanged with a shell, meaning 0 times whatever, a bar, meaning five times whatever, or a dot, one times whatever. So I could place these in any different tier, and it's going to be a different value. The one at the bottom value, or the bottom rung of the ladder, a dot on the bottom is multiplied by one, because that's the unit's place. The next highest up, if I had a dot here multiplied by 20, that would obviously just be 20. But the notation for anything third tier and above follows this pretty general pattern where you take 18 multiplied by 20 and the third tier it's 20 to the first power and then as you follow as the power raises by one for every rung of the ladder you go up or every tier of the numeric representation you go up so the third tier 18 times 20 the fourth tier, or the fourth rung of the ladder, 18 times 20 squared. So only the 20 is being squared, not the full value itself. Uh, the fourth one, 18 times 20 cubed. Fifth, 18 times 20 to the fourth, and so on and so forth, until you reach whatever is able to represent the number you are attempting to depict. All right, so this will be the final example here where I show you how this, what number this represents and how we would calculate it uh, in the modern days or what they would see intuitively by just seeing this vertical arrangement of these bars and dots. So this number, in our understanding of it, is 15,000. 
714. So based on the base 20 ladder that I showed you right before this, I'll go through how this is calculated. So this is the units rung of that ladder, so this value is going to be multiplied by 1. And we have two bars, meaning 5 and 5, so 10, and 4 dots. That's 4. 10 plus 4 is 14. So the value of 14 is going to be multiplied by 1. And going on to the next rung of the ladder, we have two bars and a dot. So 5, 5, and 1. That adds up to 11. And because it's on the next highest tier, these values get multiplied by 20. For the next one, we begin our multiplication of the value by the 18 times 20 format. Well, this is just the first one, so it's only 20 to the first power. And here we have three dots. That's three. And then moving on to our final tier here, the fourth tier. We have two dots. And that gets multiplied by the next highest exponent of 18 times 20. So 18 times 20 squared. And you would add all these values together. The top value is 14,400. This is 10,080. 220. And obviously 14. You add all these up together. And you get 15,714. Now we see the same thing there. So I hope that I was able to explain kind of the formatting of this, some of the notation, a bit of the history, and at least recognition of the bar and dot system and the vertical arrangement of its formatting. Thank you.